Have you ever run back to the pits knowing exactly what your car's doing wrong, but you've got no idea what to change to actually fix it? Well, luckily, we've had an idea that could fix that for good. One and a half years ago, I had an idea to try and fix this problem. It was when I kind of first noticed AI things. I started using ChatGPT more. Everyone in the world started using ChatGPT more. And I asked it a few questions about RC. And I realized it kind of knows nothing about racing. It knows nothing about like roll centers, things like springs. It knows nothing about setup of RC cars. And it made me think, imagine if we could have an AI, something like ChatGPT, but that knew everything about RC, how useful that would be to just bounce ideas off, get suggestions of things to do, and things like that. So I actually tried to make it. There are ways of making chatbots like that. It was basically just too difficult for me to make. Like I couldn't do it. It seemed really expensive as well. So I pretty much just gave up on the idea. But all hope was not lost just yet. See, I had just started a course at university for computer science with AI, and I kind of ended up remembering that Jamie had tried to do this before and I kind of thought well hang on a minute I can I can definitely have a crack at this I can have a go I asked Jamie to write a load of knowledge bases uh, obviously we needed uh, six which is quite a lot so he spent a lot of time on that I spent a lot of time on the back end and we both kind of finished those two parts at a similar time to start testing it and we both uh, both sat down started testing it and it it wasn't perfect see we wanted pretty much everyone to be able to ask effectively Jamie something so like how I would after a run come back and say oh you know I have got zero traction let's say and he would say oh maybe you should do this maybe you should do that and sort of why them things would give me more traction so that's what we we're really shooting for and we were happy with it it was good but it wasn't it wasn't great it wasn't it wasn't a Jamie style response so we kept working on it for months and months and months keep iterating upgrading doing different things and we're now in a place where we're really happy with it and we think uh, we think everyone will get on really well with it. Here we are then, Trackmaster AI. Let me show you how we might use it. So the best way that I think to use it is basically when you say an issue that you have on the track, something like needing more rear grip, needing more steering, needing a less edgy car, something like that. And that's where it will trawl through all the knowledge that I've put into it and it will decide basically what the best changes are suited to the question that you have asked. So if we look at this example conversation, we've said, how do I get more steering? And it's come back with a few recommended changes, which are lower the front inner camber link ball studs, increase the front camber, fit shorter steering plates, and soften the front roll stiffness by using a softer front spring or smaller front anti-roll bar. And there are things that I would all agree with. There are things I would all say if you ask me that question. And it has memory of the last five chats that are in the conversation. So you can keep a natural conversation kind of going with it. And we see at the end, it said, I can refine this by focusing on corner entry, mid corner or exit. And this is something that is very important. Often tuning for more steering into the corner will be very, very different from tuning for more steering out of the corner. So if you really feel like it's a specific part of the corner where you want more steering or something like that, um, that's going to be a very good thing to tell it to get better suggestions. So I've said here, I need it going into the corners mostly, and it's refined the suggestions to lower the front inner camber link ball studs, still the same thing for more initial steering. It kind of says here why as well, raises the front roll center and increases camber gain. If it doesn't tell you why initially, why the change does what it does, and you can actually ask it something like, why would lowering the front inner camber link ball to do this to my car? Why would it give me more steering uh, into the corners? And it'll tell you why. It'll tell you it raises the front roll center, which causes this to happen. It increases the front camber change, which causes this to happen. So you can use it to learn as well. If you, if you are thinking of a change and you don't understand really why it does what it does, I've put all of the physics and sort of theory behind it into the knowledge bases, so you should be able to learn from it as well. Increase front toe out and remove or reduce front tire sidewall glue. That's also true going into corners if you have too much sidewall glue to make the car push on. Um, so yeah, that's that one there. And then another example of kind of questions you can ask it is about a specific change. So you might be thinking, 
you might have had a change in mind that you were thinking, what would happen if I soften the front spring, like I've said here? What would that do to my steering into the corner? And it will tell you here what would happen if you soften the front spring. It says you'd actually have slightly less initial steering. You'd probably have more mid corner and exit and on power steering with more overall steering feel. You'd have better bump handling and you would have more front end dive coming into the corner as well. The front end is going to drop down more. And remember to reset your ride height after changing the springs as well. So it kind of tells you what that specific change does. It does also have the information like it said there Remember to reset the ride height. If you ask it the things you need to recheck if you've made a change, for example, if you load the front camber link and you don't know what that might affect in terms of bump steer, camber, toe, things like that, you can ask it what do I need to recheck and it will tell you that stuff as well. So there's a really big amount of things that you can do with it and you can ask it. And I really think um, you can learn a pretty good baseline of what things do and why they do it using this tool. By the way, something I've not mentioned yet, is obviously you've got two wheel drive, four wheel drive at the bottom, and you've got your surface, astro, carpet, or dirt. And each of these correspond to slightly different knowledge, slightly different knowledge bases that are in there. There's actually six knowledge bases inside this at the minute. And it's because setup does different things on these surfaces. It actually changes off and do slightly different things. Two wheel drive and four wheel drive work very differently. So it's important to get that distinction right with setup tools like this. And this is where things like uh, short setup guides and little things like that sometimes don't capture all of those nuances between the different surfaces and different types of car. So there we are, the finished product over 12,000 words in each of the knowledge bases, thousands of lines of code that Tommy's written. And finally, we're here. I can't believe we've actually managed to make this, to be honest. There's quite a few times where we were like, this just doesn't really work, and we almost gave up. But finally, it's at a place where it works amazingly. It's really now at a point where it completes its purpose well for all levels of racing. When you're just starting, you might know what your car's doing wrong. You might think, oh, it doesn't steer very much. I've not got much rear grip. But you look at the car and there's so many different things to change. You've got link positions, shock positions, changes to the shocks, things like that. And it can be impossible to know where to start. So in that scenario, it just makes everything much easier. It can give you a list of things to try for a certain problem that you've got, tell you how to change them on your car, tell them why you might wanna change them, what they're actually doing in terms of like physics and things like that. So it can really help you to learn the basics of what each change does. People who have been racing for a while, sometimes you're gonna know what most of the changes do and things, but it can be hard to choose which change to make when often they have overlapping effects, things do similar things, and it's hard to know why you might choose one over the other or what the actual reason behind certain changes are for what they do to the car and for that it's also really useful to just clarify things and take away some of the sort of confusion and overthinking about what to do with setup and hopefully for everyone just make racing more enjoyable give you more understanding for what you're working with and have a better time at the track the first 50 people that subscribe for unlimited questions are going to get 50 percent off for three months you do also get five trial questions a month, so you can go and have a play with it. All the links are down below with the discount codes and things like that. So that's where you can head to check it out.